Praise God. Glory to God. I need everybody today. Today, today is a special day. I want everybody on this day today. I want you to thank the Lord over seven times. There's a reason why I'm saying that because David said, I've praised thee seven times in the book of Psalms. This is very important. I want you to praise God over seven times today. See, according to the natural, they all seem like a, nat a small number. But according to the activation of your gratitude, it's major. How many of you all enjoyed the wisdom doors from yesterday? I need some of you all, if you can, to write me Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17. The book of Proverbs is so important because you want to be on point with the wisdom of God and it can activate you, it can jumpstart you. I want you to write me Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17. If you can. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17. Which is so powerful. Did you laugh last night? How many of you all was on the broadcast? Did you laugh? Always know that your divine connection hates your stagnation, hates your struggles, hates any satanic activity in your mind. If you ever want to see the passion of a man of God, you'll see it in the realm of satanic activity. Thank you for everybody that's writing the text for me. Thank you so much. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17. This caught my attention because the Holy Spirit has spoke to me, told me to go there. And it caught my attention. It said, he who keeps instruction is in the way of life. But he who refuses correction goes astray. The Holy Spirit began to talk to me about this text and it was very powerful because I began to realize that in this text, in this passage of scripture, there's a hidden path to heaven. There's a hidden path to your assignment. In this very text, as I begin to meditate after the Lord told me, he focused me in on this text. He began to speak to me about the fact that it says that he that is in the way of life. What the Lord began to say to me that there's other ways. But the way of life is where instruction will be given to you. But there's other ways that has no instruction. But that's not the way that leads to heaven. See, saints, in our life, you can choose a life with no instruction. But what happens is that way is going to produce the losing of your soul. That way is going to produce your eternal separation from God forever and ever. I begin to meditate on this and the Lord began to speak to me. And something very powerful that I begin to recognize is that instructions or a man of God instructing you is the revelation that you're destined to go to heaven. 
or rather if you can obey the instructions, it is a revelation that you're supposed to go to heaven. The instructions are a signal to you that your name is given an opportunity to be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, saints, the second part of the text was, was wowing to me. What does the second part say? Can somebody write it for me? Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17. If you're taking notes, write this down. While, while somebody is writing the verse, I want you to just listen to these wisdom doors. Favor is access to the appetite of God. Favor is access to the appetite of God. Saints, do you know that every time you have favor, God is giving you access to his appetite? He's giving you access to what pleases him or what satisfies him or what he's been searching for in a person. Everybody has something in them that brings pleasure to Jesus. But humility will decide whether or not it comes forth. A man of God has an anointing to withdraw out of the heavenly account of your virtue, out of the heavenly account of of your servanthood. Everybody has inside of them something or some things that make Jesus excited. Everybody has something in them that sparks Jesus's joy. He made man to worship him. And he made things to worship man. Think about this. Think about this. It's powerful. It's powerful. It's very powerful. So Jesus created everything off of the concept of worship. He created everything off of the concept of you have something in you that I like. And your humility is going to decide whether or not you give it to me. Your humility and fear of the Lord is going to decide. Now, what was so powerful, saints, when Jesus went down and preached to the same spirits that was destroyed in Noah's day? I want to I want you to hear this. And you never heard this a day in your life because this is fresh, fresh from the mouth of God. Notice that in the flood that it was water that drowned them. And notice when Jesus goes down to prison, he preaches the word to them. Here's what you want to catch. Because the people in Noah's day were not humble. When the word came to them, it drowned them. It judged them. Now that they're in prison, eternal damnation, they're humble. So when Jesus preaches the word to them, now they come out. Here's the powerful thing that I want you to see. That Noah was Jesus in Genesis. The Ark of the Covenant was a representation of the blood covenant that was to come. When Noah was preaching, he had the assignment to preach, repent. Basically, because the kingdom of God is at hand. So when Noah was preaching, he was Jesus in the flesh in Genesis, telling the people turn. And the reason why they got drowned in water is because Noah was the Jesus that was releasing water to the generation. And when they refused it, then they got judged by the very same thing they refused. So imagine how the very thing 
that they said no to was the very thing that they lost their life in. Jesus was giving them water through the body of Noah. So when they denied it, they got drowned in the very water that he was given to them to save them. One thing that you want to catch as well is that when Noah was in the ark, you notice that the water never drowned him. Because when you're in humility, the word that God speaks to you, do not drown you, it abounds you. So after he comes out of the ark, God establishes the covenant and says, I will bless you. You shall be fruitful and multiply. So he does not get drowned by the water. He abounds by the water, which is in line with Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20, says that the faithful man shall abound with blessings. So now Noah is receiving increase and the others receive being deceased because the same word had a different reaction based upon their humility levels. So when Jesus went down to prison, now he's given them the water afresh, which is the word. But because they're humble, they receive it. Now, saints, I'm going to say something else to you that you never heard a day in your life. All these people that was caught in the flood had something in them that Jesus wanted to come forth. Something in them that he created that if they would let it come forth. It will produce favor. It will produce life and protection. They had something in them that he loved, but they withheld it from him in the days of Noah. So when Jesus goes down there and he preaches the word to them, because they're in a humble place, what he likes come out of them. Because now they're letting him activate them because they're in a humble place. See, humility permits God to activate what was non-active inside of you. So now that they're humble, now God can bring forth what he likes. And as a result, when that happens, now they are able to come out of prison. Saints, I want you to hear me very powerfully. You never heard this before. Mental prison is a harvest for holding back what God loves that he invested inside of you. Mental prison is the consequence for the imprisonment of gifts and abilities that God gave you to please him. So they were in prison because this is what they did to the gifts and abilities of God that was inside of them. In their life, they imprisoned the gifts and the abilities of God. So when they end up in prison for all eternity, it is a reflection of where they decided to stand in their responses to Jesus in their life. When Jesus preaches to them in prison, which is in the realm of eternity, they are then released from the prison. Why? Because now they're releasing something out of them that was in them to make Jesus happy. Because they're in a humble place, now it can come forth. Your low place is your grow place. If you take a note, you can write that down. Your low place is your grow place. This is the place that you grow. Your low place is your grow place. This is the reason why that Joseph went down to the pit. Joseph went down to the pit because God was releasing palace mentalities. He was releasing palace characteristics and palace responses. See, you in, in, in the world, they say go high. But in, in the kingdom, God says go low. And that's how I bring you high. See, the thing about the text is that when you see Joseph, God specifically picked the pit for his life because in a pit, it is deep underneath the ground. It goes deep within the earth. And see, I want you to understand that when Joseph went down in the pit, it was similar as when Jesus went down to hell. 
and he came back with the keys of death and hell. So Joseph had to go down to the pit. It was like he was crucified because it was a revelation that he was the Jesus of his family. Oh my God. The fact when he went down into the ground, because even the Bible says that Jesus shall go down deep into the earth, the heart of the earth, five, uh, three days and three nights. When he went deep down into the ground, it was a revelation that he was the Jesus of his family. He was the Jesus of his generation. He was the Jesus of the Egyptian community and government. He was the Jesus. And saints, this is why there's a last supper where him and his brothers are sitting there and they cannot recognize him because that represents after Jesus rose from the dead, when Jesus began to eat with the disciples. Yes, they said that my heart burned within me, but they did not know that they was talking to Jesus until he opened up their eyes to see who he was. And so the text was a representation of what took place in Jesus's time when Joseph was around his brothers it was a revelation of when Jesus was around the disciples and none of them was able to discern that it was Jesus and Jesus even did something that was marvelous that he began to teach them mighty things and show them kingdom things and saints if you remember what Joseph did is that Joseph showed them the kingdom how because he walked in love and Jesus Jesus said, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So when he was feeding, the Bible said, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If they are thirsty, give them drink. So when he was feeding them at the table, Joseph was doing the same thing Jesus was doing. He was teaching them the kingdom. I'm going to say something real powerful to you and you'll catch this. Jesus was teaching them the gospel through words, but Joseph was teaching them the gospel through actions. Oh my God. So while Jesus is talking to them about the kingdom, Joseph is walking to them with the kingdom by his responses and his reactions. So when he's feeding them in the famine. It is the same assignment that Isaiah the prophet understood and he gave the revelation and he was the same one that Jesus used his words. And Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. What was going on when Jesus was saying that the spirit of the Lord of God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. What Jesus was saying that I am anointed to feed those that are in lack. I'm anointed to supply them with nourishment, those that are in famine. So when the famine hit and Joseph is in the thick of this famine, he's being used as the Jesus in that famine to feed the people that are in lack, are poor. And the Bible lets us know that Joseph he prepares a banquet and he's feeding them in the famine, which is the same assignment of Jesus, which is the spirit of the Lord of God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. What Jesus was doing, the same thing Joseph was doing. He was feeding those that were in famine. He was feeding those that were in lack. He was feeding those that were without. This is the powerful wisdom of God.